very much, buddy. Um, so, my name is Mark McDonald. I'm from Mayo. Um, I graduated from the GMIT in 2009 um, with an honours degree in applied biology and biopharmaceutical science. Um, Joanne and Imelda spoke a lot about the uh, um, honours degree, masters, and certificates and all the extracurricular activities. I only have the one degree, but I jumped straight into work. Um, so, um, that was my idea. I wanted to get in and out of college as quick as I could and get into industry, and it was a perfect uh, course to do that. So, I'm just going to do a very short presentation on my role as validation project manager. Hope this works. Yeah. So, just a quick overview of the presentation I'm going to give. Uh, I'm going to give a quick uh, overview of my career profile so far. Uh, Charles River, at a glance, validations, the area of validations I'm working in at a glance. My current role, work projects, challenges and uh, major achievements that I've done in my role so far. Tips for getting on in industry and different areas in the pharmaceutical industry that may interest you. So I'm gonna go ahead. So my career profile. So in April 2009, I started a six month internship in Boston Scientific here in Galway in the sterilization department. And um, that was part of the, my industrial placement in the final year uh, for my course. And in May, 2009, I completed my thesis and finished my honours degree program in applied biology and biopharmaceutical science. <clears throat> so, as I said, after the six month internship in Boston Scientific, I soon started as in Charles River Laboratories in Banlac County, Mayo, in uh, one month after I finished Boston Scientific. So, I was very happy with that. And that was as a lab technician just working in the testing facility there. Uh, in January 2011, I attained the role as Department Curator and Deputy Environmental Monitoring Supervisor within the department. So my role there just further enhanced. I came out of the lab and went towards a more quality control role. And in June last year, 2012, I was selected for the position of Validation Project Manager for the BPS departments in Charles River, Banana. So that's basically covers departments like uh, microbiology, bioassay, immunoassay, higher education departments. So that's currently the role I'm working in now. So Charles River, as a company, just at a quick glance, very quickly, uh, if you're interested, who are they? They're a global provider of research models and preclinical, clinical and support services. They're founded in 1947. The headquarters are in Wilmington, Massachusetts, in the States. There's about 7,500 employees worldwide, and there's a global presence of over 64 facilities in 15 countries. The most update I get is that's in 2011. So the customers of Charles River are leading pharmaceutical, biotechnology, government and academic organisations all around the world. And the services we provide are basic research, discovery, safety and efficacy, clinical support and process manufacturing. So basically, the site of Banana offers all those uh, drug discovery, basic research for new drugs, safety and efficacy of existing drugs. So that's it. And a quick overview of the company that I'm working for. So validations at a quick glance for those that, of you that don't know it, probably a lot of people don't know, that validation, it's a regulatory requirement to perform validation. So any GMP facility, for example, medical device facility or um, drug manufacturing facilities, um, it's a regulatory requirement for them to perform a validation on equipment processes uh, or systems. Um, I have a couple of uh, logos there from the main regulatory bodies here in Ireland, Irish Medicines Board, and the US FDA Food and Drug Administration. They are um, just two of the big regulatory bodies. So they require, they set the standards, and we, all companies, Charles River is one of them that um, are required to perform validation in all their systems because we're a GMP facility. So to talk, quickly talk through it, validation is checking or verifying that a product, process, or system meets the needs of its users and fulfills its intended purpose. So basically, in a nutshell, that uh, the product, process, or system does what it's supposed to do. Um, validation ensures that the product, process, or system is capable of routinely accomplishing the tasks that are it's designed for. So again, that it does what it's supposed to do. So for example, a uh, simple example of a lab piece of equipment like an incubator that's required to be used to incubate an, a sample or an item at 37 degrees. If we buy the piece of equipment, you can't assume that it's going to work if it's set at 37 degrees. You can't take the manufacturer's word for it. So it's a regulatory requirement to do to validate that, to test it, and to produce uh, records that it will produce um, the required temperature. With, for example, it's at 37 degrees through its life cycle, 
and then it would be requalified or revalidated, uh, maybe annually or every six months, whichever the company wants it to be. So again, you're ensuring that the equipment is validated, and then it's okay for use in the testing for a GMP test. So as validation project manager, I project manage the full life cycle of validation projects in the BPS division of Charles River. So what that is, I, valid, I project manage the validation teams for maybe each piece of equipment or system that needs to be validated. It's a huge documentation effort. Um, maybe uh, it could take three or four months to validate uh, a simple piece of equipment. So there's a validation team there um, writing plans, uh, organizing the testing, writing, writing testing and then writing reports until it's, it's finally okay and validated, which is okay for use. So I basically project manage those um, systems. So uh, my current role is some of the work projects I'm working on at the moment. Main project is I'm currently working on a large validation project in which several pieces of new equipment need to be validated and ready for use in a very short timeline. So recently Charles River um, were awarded a new contract with a company with new work in the facility. So a lot of new equipment, lab equipment need and systems need to be put in place and purchased, uh, for example, safety cabinets, fridges, freezers, incubators, environmental monitoring systems, stuff like that, uh, needs to be purchased. So um, all those need to be validated before the testing can start. And the targets must be met in order for the work to commence. So this new contract, there's a timeline for when the work to commence. So basically all this stuff has to be validated and ready for use for this work to commence. So under big pressure with that one. So everything has to be done for a certain timeline. And as I said, um, there's validation teams working on getting these equipments or systems uh, validated. So one piece of equipment could take three or four months. So a lot of those at one time is a lot of work and you'd hope the turnaround time is, is, is crucial. Um, side projects I'm working on at the moment is like just identifying areas of possible improvements within the validations department and using Six Sigma tools to reduce inefficiencies. So um, in most companies, um, they encourage employees to look for areas of improvement uh, in, in a lot of pharmaceutical industries and I assume in all the other sectors. Um, companies want areas of improvement and employees to um, identify those areas because they're the people working there. So that would probably always be a side project of that uh, within the company. Companies offer in often offer incentives like maybe iPods or vouchers and stuff like that just to encourage employees to come up with ideas. Um, to reduce the times that they're doing something, therefore it'll reduce cost, so it'll speed up the work. And um, I know a lot of pharmaceutical companies do that. Always looking to improve the process, which is called lean manufacturing. You might have heard that before. Um, so in my current role, some of the challenges I face on a day-to-day -day basis, um, the main one is people. Of course, in every, um, in every work area, there's, uh, you have to deal with people, whether it's in teams or just your colleagues. Um, it's important to have good communication to work effectively with people. You have to deal with them maybe at meetings in your, within your team or just communicating on a day-to-day -day basis. It's important to be um, approachable and to approach people carefully. There's hundreds of different personalities in, a, in all these different areas and some people might need different approaches than others. So it's key to, to learn how to deal with people um, from day one just to make your life easier and to make the, the job or the project go smoother. Um, another challenge, uh, day to day challenge, is meeting timelines. Of course, whenever you hear projects, you hear timelines or turnaround times or due dates. So, um, this is a challenge, so it's important to plan and organize. Um, not to set, if your timelines are set, to plan and uh, communicate with the people of, that everyone knows what timelines to work towards, or if you're setting a timeline yourself not to underestimate how long the project will be, so plan, uh, organise and evaluate how long the project will be. So that's a major um, challenge, you're constantly looking at the calendar, there will be loads of different timelines uh, stuck on your calendar, so it's important to have good organisation skills. And uh, just another one I picked for example is quality. So in the pharmaceutical industry obviously uh, quality is very important because um, you, in, if you're te is testing facility for drugs or drug manufacturing, um, they will have quality departments that audit the, internally the work that's going on inside the company. So your quality must always be of a high standard in the pharmaceutical industry. So that may clash with the timelines or people sometimes. So 
if you're working um, towards timelines um, and under pressure, the quality must always remain high. So no matter how close that timeline is approaching or if you're going over it, uh, you can't drop the quality. Um, because as I said, the, you know, the companies audit internally and the quality must be high if you're sending work to a client or a customer. Um, quality must always stay high. So there are just three uh, examples of some of the challenges on the day basis that I and most people would say face. So just major achievements. I just picked a, I just picked up one I don't have uh, two anymore apart from turn up to work every day. Uh, in, in 2011, I won the Charles Ever Spotlight Award. It's just uh, an award in the company for uh, during my role as department curator in the, the quality control role. In 2011, I received this award for implementing systems that resulted in a significant reduction in the number of equipment-related findings during quality audits. So basically, when I was in that role, there was um, a number of quality. Um, issues with the equipment. So I just looked at the problems there and um, communicated with the team that was working on it and we reduced the uh, number of findings by about 90%. So that saved a lot of time um, you know, um, within the department and improved the efficiency of the equipment uh, within the department. So that's just one example of uh, an award I got from the company. Um, so I'm going to give some tips for getting on the industry from my point of view uh, is that I'm only um, early on in my career but um, I've come across some tips that I'm going to throw up here in front of you. Listen to senior staff members and learn from their advice. So p these people have been around the block, they, uh, you know, they've been working in the company a long time. Listen to what they have to say and take it on board because you're only learning and um, you're at the bottom so you need to take their advice on board. Um, communication, I mentioned before, is key. Work relationships will become strong from clever communication. So you'll always be dealing with people. So if you have good communication skills, if anything else, and get your point across clear, if you're asking questions, ask the you know, clear questions if you're speaking to your manager and, uh, or your teammates if you're having a meeting um, on a team project. Communication is the most important. If you're very clear and your communication skills are good, um, people will listen more and be more approachable towards you. Um, Embrace change, take opportunities, get as much training as possible. So in the pharmaceutical industry, there's lots of different areas. Um, you know, get cross-trained as much as you can if you're going into the workplace uh, or if you're looking at um, yeah, younger um, people looking at, uh, towards the future of working. Uh, just embrace change, take opportunities. You know, don't say no within reason, if you're, especially if you're starting off early in your career. Um, accept challenges and take a positive approach to work tasks. So things are thrown in front of you um, at work all the time, especially earlier on in your career, as they say, that you might not do. And just accept and do as best you can. Just take, be positive about the task. Uh, aim high in your department or area. Uh, if you aim high and you know, if it's worth it, as you can see, I started uh, three and a half, four years ago, and um, constantly moving um, forward. Just aim as high as you can. So um, the managers, the senior figures will see that inside the company. Uh, maintain the standards you set yourself which will gain respect from the colleagues, so don't drop your standards, uh, which basically just means if you have a high quality of work, work, work ethic, uh, just maintain your standards and uh, you know, keep striving forward and that will gain respect from others and take you seriously inside the company. Um, I don't have much left. I'm going to speak briefly about the different areas of the pharmaceutical industry. Um, it took me ages to do that. Was it his presentation? Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, there's a lot of different areas. There's only there's only a few common ones here. There's lots more I know, but uh, uh, the, here's a few common areas in the pharmaceutical industry. The great thing about science, if you get a general science degree, or like I did biopharmaceutical science, it's very you know it's related to the pharmaceutical industry. There's lots of different areas. Uh, if you want to just you know start working in industry straight away, get your foot in the door in any area and then you can work across them because these pharmaceutical industries have lots of different departments and area that you can constantly transverse across. So here for example, I started as a lab technician in the, we'll say the production area, in the testing facility and then I moved on to uh, uh, equipment curator, it's more of a quality control role um, as you can see up there and then now I'm in validations. So I, in validations I work closely with quality assurance and calibrations so I mean, I'm touching on, if you, the best thing to do is touch on a lot of areas when you get, get cross-trained as much as you can to put yourself in a strong position. 
uh, in the pharmaceutical industry and also to uh, put yourself in a strong position for possible future employers. So get cross training as much as you can. The best thing is to get the foot in the door. I got my foot in the door early, and I just, I, you know, as I said back in the slides, yeah, um, you know, don't say no to anything. You know, take as much training as possible. So I don't even know what area I would like to end up in. I'm, I'm only 25. I'm doing validation at the moment, and it's 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 newish to me, and it's it's I'm enjoying it at the moment. But I'm also interested in quality assurance, reg affairs. Um, you know, I might end up there, I don't know, but definitely uh, I'd like to try every area in the science industry and then maybe later on in my career uh, decide to, um, you know, to be an expert, train up to be an expert in that area. Um, people talk about, uh, and especially earlier, about, you know, getting qualifications and further studies. Um, what kind of my point of view is get in industry and then um, train while you're in there. Pick a specific area that you're interested in and upskill in that area. You know, there's there's other um, um, certs and diplomas you can do while you're in that position to upskill into that area to become maybe a manager, or supervisor, or team leader, um, basically an expert in that area, which uh, college courses or masters mightn't always offer. So um, there are some of the areas I've I've also touched on health and safety and you know and operations as well. So basically, there are some common areas get trained as much as you can if you are getting into, into industry and also it's promising if you are want to do a science course um, there's a couple of here in GMIT you're basically you know get your degree and then you can you can almost pick all these different areas that some they are quite linked as a lot of places there are different departments but they're also different in their ways you know some is uh, re research and development is in the lab very hands-on production would also you know might be hands-on but quality assurance reg affairs very um, International based and office based, and validations is you know, and calibrations would deal with equipment more the engineering side of things and would be very technical, um, also. So, a lot of different areas in the pharmaceutical industry that may interest people. And that's it. Thanks very much uh, for your time, and I'll answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you.